Football analyst Blaine Fowler and I will be in San Francisco Friday night as part of BYU TV's live coverage. And uh, boy, what a game we're going to watch. Yeah, these are two teams that are very evenly matched. They are very similar to one another. Balanced teams that can run and throw the football with equal success. And so I'm really excited about this one. This could be a fun bowl game for BYU and their fans. Both teams come in with identical eight and four records. They come in having played eight times and each team has beaten the other four times. What do you expect Friday night? Well, this Washington team is, is a team that has some quality wins. Boise State, they beat Arizona, very good Arizona team. Oregon State, who throws the football around. You know, losses to a couple of real tough teams in Stanford and Oregon, but a team coming in here with confidence confidence that they have talent and can win football games with it but with a new coaching staff on the sidelines under the spotlight quarterback Keith Price well Price is a versatile quarterback and he doesn't run the football like Taysom Hill but he has very good feet so he'll buy time for himself back in the pocket and throw the football downfield look at his numbers at over 65 percent completion I love his decision making 20 touchdowns just five interceptions he is a very good quarterback and I would say he could be the best quarterback that BYU will have faced this entire season. A lot of good running backs in the Pac-12 this year, and Bishop Sankey's right up there at the best. Well, he reminds me a lot of the running backs BYU faced in that Wisconsin game. Very physical. He can go inside and get that tough yardage, but if you let him bounce it to the outside, he's got tremendous speed and can beat you for big plays. You look at his per carry average, 5.8 yards a carry and 18 touchdowns. And when Washington gets down in the red zone, they love to give the football to him. They've scored 75 5% of their trips into the red zone have resulted in touchdowns. So they're very efficient there, and Sankey's the guy that makes that happen. BYU's historically pretty good stop in the run in bowl games. Whose job will it be to take down the Bishop? Well, they've got to have great play from their entire linebacking core, especially those inside backers, because Washington likes to run it at you, and then the outside backers are going to have to contain. So this is a big game for those four backers in this one if they're going to stop Bishop Sankey, and that's really the number one key in this ball game is to stop the run game of the Huskies. Let's take a look now at this week's film session, sponsored by Zions Direct. Current insights and trends, providing some of the latest ideas in finance available in their weekly newsletter at ZionsDirect.com. What are you going to show us? We'll talk about defending the run. You've got to tie up blockers on the line with your front then your backers have to play well the two inside backers the play side backer the one closest to us he's going to take on the lead blocker and then the backside backer is going to scrape over and make the play we've seen BYU when they defend the run well do this perfectly you see taking on the lead blocker a tackle at the line of scrimmage perfectly played run play on that one now here's another this time we're going to get some great play by Peck on the D-line. Usually, you want these guys just to tie up blockers. This time, he gets off of a block and actually gets involved in the tackle. And then Juan Yunga, as he has all season long, going to scrape from that backside backer. He and Peck arrive at the running back at the same time and make a great play at the line of scrimmage. That's the kind of play BYU will have to have in this ballgame because they've got to stop Washington from running the football. They've got to force him to be one-dimensional and just put it all on Keith Price and make him throw the ball. Bronco is 6-2 and two in these bowl games. He didn't like to practice a whole lot uh, leading up to maybe six times of, of full-fledged workouts. What's working for him? I think that his philosophy is fresh legs and fresh minds are better than doing things over and over and over again. When you've played 12 games, you really need to know what you're doing at that point. And I think it's just getting timing back, and he feels like six or seven practices is enough to do that. And, man, he's had great success over the years in winning bowl games. Let's take a look at AT&T Park. This is a unique setup. It's where the San Francisco Giants play baseball. We'll be down there on the sidelines live Friday night on BYU TV. And on the same sideline, Blaine, will be the Huskies and the Cougars. Yeah, this is a ballpark that's configured for baseball, not for football. They, they play this fight hunger bowl in this stadium, So it'll look strange to BYU to not look across the field and see an opponent there. I don't think it'll have any impact on the way they play. Um, I think it'll be a good crowd at this ball game. The weather's supposed to be good. You yeah. and I haven't had great weather when we've no, been we on the road not. at no, Wisconsin and Notre Dame. Was good. So we're hoping Virginia. for some mid, yeah, Virginia. <sighs> mid 60s is what we're predicting for this weekend. And, uh, and I like both of these offenses. This could be a high scoring game if the weather cooperates. Another unique aspect to Friday's game will be this. It'll be the first time in FBS history that a game has had two female officials on the crew. Former NFL Vice President of Officiating and Fox Sports contributor Mike Piera talked to us about it on Friday on BYU Sports Nation. I don't really care about color or gender 
or age or anything when it comes to officiating. Just give me competency. Sarah Thomas, who is going to be the line judge in the uh, in the game on Friday, she can work. And as a matter of fact, uh, you will hear her name in the NFL, I say, within two years. Mike Pereira there, what do you think? I, I don't think it has any impact on the game, if you've got great officials and, and they can see things and they know the game, you know, I'm, I'm with Mike. I, I think that females can do a great job, and players don't really notice that. You might walk up and notice, but, you know, officials are in their hats and in their uniforms. You don't right. notice who's out there. You only notice when they make bad calls. Yes, and we do notice that. Okay, you've got your prediction. Hold on to it. We'll be back in just a few minutes.